Chapter 7 A few days later, I headed home for the evening, tired and starving. I parked in the space assigned to my apartment and headed up the stairs, eager to be home. Reaching the landing in front of my door, I realized I could smell food cooking and knew Devon was already home and had started dinner. This was starting to become a habit, one I could get used to. Inside, I hung my purse on the doorknob and glanced around, thinking briefly about having to pack everything and moving. I pushed the thought out of my mind as I made my way to the kitchen. There, I discovered that Devon wasn't alone. The scent of food had distracted me enough that I hadn't picked up Rain's distinctive cinnamon fragrance. Hey Rain, how you doing? I stepped past my brother on my way to Devon, where he stood in front of the stove stirring something in a large pot. I wrapped my arms around his waist and hugged his back. I'm doing all right, how about you? Rain replied. I pulled away from Devon and sat in one of the chairs at the small table, facing Rain. I'm good. His brows lifted as if he didn't believe me, his eyes moving back and forth between Devon and I for a moment, and I wondered what he was thinking. If he knew things had changed between Devon and I. How was your day? Devon asked, setting down the spoon he'd been using so his hands were empty. He bent and kissed the top of my head before moving to stand behind my chair. Placing a hand on each of my shoulders, he started to knead them, working out some of the tension of the day. Long, I sighed and let my head drop as the wonderful sensation of his hands helped me to relax. We're still swamped with calls wanting details about Annie's death. I spend half my day telling people, no comment. I looked up at Rain. Still no leads? Not really. They're still processing evidence, but so far, there hasn't been anything that helps. Are you on the case? Devon asked. Not officially, but we're all helping out, doing what we can. Something like this happens so rarely around here, we all pitch in as much as we can. We want to find her killers. Killers? There was more than one? The unexpected word caught my attention. Yeah. There's evidence of at least two, possibly three. Evidence how? Can you tell us? Devon asked. Bruising left by at least two different people, possibly more they're still measuring, but two is obvious. How can they tell? I wanted to know. Different sizes. When you have two sets of bruises made by right hands, and they're noticeably different in size, it's hard to argue. I didn't have a response to that. So I know you know. When are you telling the family? Rain asked. It took me a second to realize he wasn't talking about Annie anymore, but I still didn't know what he was talking about. My confusion must have shown because he spoke again, slowly cluing me in. Baby. I felt my face heat and knew it was bright red. Someday I might get used to Rain knowing things he hadn't been told. We told Mom and Dad, but other than that, we're keeping it quiet for a while. I'm not going to tell my folks for a while yet. Devin put in. Rain looked surprised. My mom is an irredeemable gossip. If we tell her, it will be all over town. Rain seemed to understand. I'll keep it under my hat, but you don't want to keep it a secret too long or it'll cause hard feelings. I know, I said. We won't be able to keep it a secret very long, but I need some time. I need to come to terms with it before we can tell everyone. I need to be happy about it before I let other people be happy for me. Rain seemed to know better than to try to argue. How long have you known? Devon asked. Since before you two went to Seattle, Rain said with a shrug. But I stopped, realizing that Rain had known before I was actually pregnant. I guess when he'd told me that he sometimes sees the future, he meant it. I shook my head but didn't continue. If you knew she was going to get pregnant, did you know she was going to be kidnapped? Devon asked, his eyes narrowing. No. I can't control what I see. 
Sometimes I wish I could, sometimes I'm glad I can't, but if I'd had any idea Nikki was in danger, I would have said something. I would have warned you to be more careful. As it is, I knew she was going to have your baby, but I didn't know how soon until Sunday when I woke that morning, I saw you telling mom and dad. From the first vision, I couldn't tell when. It could have been now or not for another five years, if at all. Devin nodded, accepting Rain's explanation. You want something to eat? Devin invited my brother as he moved away from my chair. He pulled a large pan of biscuits out of the oven. Looks like biscuits and gravy. I put in, trying to convince my brother to stay. What's in the gravy? He asked. Hamburger. I answered. Rain scowled. You just got home, how do you know what's in the gravy? I can smell it. It's not spicy like sausages and it's beef. I can even fry you some eggs if you'd like. No, biscuits and hamburger gravy's good. I don't need eggs too. Then you'll stay? I didn't even bother to disguise the hopeful tone to my voice. I like spending time with my brother. Rain nodded, a slow smile spreading across his face. Yeah, I'll stay. I stood and helped serve by getting drinks for everyone while Devin finished getting dinner on the table. When I explained to Mr. Willoughby about my pregnancy, I told him that my virgin morning sickness was difficult to handle. I asked for some time off to get a handle on things. I tried to soften the request by saying that I didn't know how long I would need, but hopefully in a week or two, I would be able to come back to work. He was reluctant, but agreed to let me have the time. I spent most of Friday getting all the leave paperwork taken care of so I could make the trip to Texas for the pack. 